Palm Olive Soap, Your Beauty Hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous dream girl hair bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. <laughs> Although our Miss Brooks teaches English at Madison High, her problems, like those of any other teacher, aren't always confined to purely scholastic ones. There's Mr. Philip Boynton, for instance, a biology teacher of whom Miss Brooks is extremely fond. And who, in return, lavishes his affection upon his frogs and guinea pigs. <laughs> and there have been other problems, too. A perfect example of what I'm talking about occurred last Sunday. A grand illustration of what can happen when you let a little softness of the heart spread to your head. The day started off innocently enough when my landlady, Mrs. Davis, knocked on my door around 9.30 in the morning. Connie! Oh, Connie! Get up, Connie. It's 9.30. Oh, come on in, Mrs. Davis. Oh, I don't like to disturb you like this on Sunday. Oh, that's all right, Mrs. Davis. I've been up. Since when? Since you said, Connie, oh, Connie, get up, Connie, it's 9.30. <laughs> well, I got your note to wake you, dear. And... I'm glad you did, Mrs. Davis. I've got to do a little checking today on one of my pupils who's been absent all week, Eddie Garson. But, Connie, today's Sunday. I know, Mrs. Davis, but Eddie's always had such a good record of attendance. I just can't understand it. His mother hasn't answered any of my notes, and by tomorrow, Mr. Conklin will send a truant officer after him. I'm going over to his house today and investigate. Oh, it's very nice of you to take such an interest in the boy, Connie. Well, I feel it's my duty to go to Eddie's home, Mrs. Davis. He's always been a good student, well-behaved, with a fine character, and he lives four doors from Mr. Boynton. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Connie, did Mr. Boynton ask you for a date? Well, how could he, Mrs. Davis? I haven't asked him to yet. <laughs> But if I can straighten out Eddie Garson in a hurry, I might accidentally run into Mr. Boynton. I'm perfectly willing to meet him halfway. Of course, if his door opens outward, I'm liable to get a broken nose. <laughs> <laughs> but I understand that Mr. Boynton likes to take his Sunday morning constitutional by himself. Well, that's what's nice about a constitutional. You can always amend it. <laughs> <laughs> Coming. Miss Brooks. May I come in, Eddie? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Sit down, Miss Brooks. Thank you, Eddie. I'm glad to see you're not sick. I came over to find out why you haven't been in school all week. Well, frankly, Miss Brooks, I've been pretty busy. Oh, well, I guess I can go home now. <laughs> you know, it's no joke trying to raise kids. Kids? But you're only 14 years old yourself. Well, that's what makes it so tough. Oh, well, I guess I can go home now. <laughs> I've been taking care of my kid brothers, Miss Brooks. You see, my father's on the road and my mother's in the hospital. Oh, I'm sorry, Eddie. Is there anything I can do to help? Oh, there sure is, Miss Brooks. Mom's over in the Clay City Hospital, and I'd like to hitch a ride out and see her today. If there was only someone to stay with the kids. Well... You will? Oh, gee, that's wonderful, Miss Brooks. Hey, Mike. <laughs> hey, Mike. Hey, Daddy, will you come here? What do you want, Eddie? Yeah, this is Miss Brooks. She's my English teacher at school. Oh. <laughs> I'm uh, glad to know you, too, Mike. And this is Danny. Say hello to Miss Brooks, Danny. Hello. <laughs> huh? Now, there won't be any trouble at all, Miss Brooks. In fact, they'll give you all the help you need. Help? Well, yeah, with Tommy, the baby. Help? <laughs> well, I'll be running along now. I'll be home in time for dinner. Thanks a million. So long. Well... Here we are. <laughs> I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. <laughs> well, you'll have to wait. <laughs> oh, on second thought, maybe you two other two better wait. <laughs> oh, quiet, baby. Nice, baby. Your mother will be home soon. <laughs> oh, dear. How does your mother keep him quiet? You gotta tell him a story. Yeah, you gotta tell him a story. All right, I'll tell you a story. <laughs> <laughs> Once upon a time... <laughs> he heard that one. <laughs> He's pretty blasé for a child his age. Anyway, once there were three bears. You want to tell him that old chestnut? <laughs> Give her a chance, Danny. She might put a switch on it. <laughs> Oh, 
And so Snow White and the Prince lived happily ever after. I'm glad for him. I wonder why Eddie ain't home. You wonder why Eddie ain't home? Some English teacher. <laughs> You know, I never in my life hit a child, and this is the first time I ever wondered why. <laughs> Eddie should have been back by now, though. It's after seven. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. <laughs> well, I'll get you something to eat and drink in a minute. <laughs> Quiet, Tommy. Now, once there was a girl named Little Red Riding Hood. Oh, great. Whose father was a traveling salesman. <laughs> And the glass slipper fit right over Cinderella's foot. Ooh, well, thank goodness they're all asleep. Now, if I only knew where Eddie was. Oh, shh. Hello? Hello, Miss Brooks. Well, gee, I had a wonderful visit with my mother, thanks to you. Oh, I'm glad, Eddie, but where are you now? Well, I'm still in Clay City, Miss Brooks, with some friends and mothers. The doctor said she can go home tomorrow, and if you'll just stay with the kids overnight... Oh, but Eddie, I haven't got any... Uh... We're one of mother's. Well, gee, I... <laughs> I sure appreciate this, Miss Brooks. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, well, it's in a good cause. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. <laughs> Once there were three little pigs. Let's not bring personalities into this. <laughs> I'm thirsty. Well, come on. Drop the other shoe. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> now, once there was a big giant. Oh, what a horrible night. Let's see now. I better see what's in the kitchen before hungry, thirsty, and screamy wake up. <laughs> Well, there's not a thing in the cupboards. I better call Mrs. Davis. If they'll only stay quiet for a few more minutes. Hello. Hello, Mrs. Davis. This is Connie. Connie, I've been worried sick. Where in the world have you been? I have no time to explain now, but I want you to do me a favor. When Walter Denton comes by to take me to school, send him over to 225 Park Street. 225 Park Street? Yes, Mrs. Davis, I can't make it to school today. But, Connie... I'll tell you all about it when I see you. Hmm, this is mysterious. Not going to school on Monday morning. Well, I'd better call Mr. Conklin. I'll just tell him that Connie is sick and... Hello? Hello. Is that you, Osgood? This is Mr. Conklin speaking. And... <laughs> this is Margaret Davis Osgood, and I just want to tell you that Miss Brooks won't be in school today. She doesn't feel well. Doesn't feel well? What's the matter with her? I really don't know, Osgood. I just know she's quite indisposed. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Mrs. Davis. You always get indisposed on Monday. <laughs> What's that, Osgood? Tell Miss Brooks to take care of herself. Goodbye. Well, he didn't sound very concerned. If I were you, Connie, I wouldn't go in until I... Well, who am I talking to? She's not even home. What are we going to eat, Miss Brooks? As soon as I send one of my students to the store, Mike. You flying hooky today, Miss Brooks? I guess I'll have to until your brother Eddie comes home. Hey, that reminds me. I better call Mr. Conklin. But what'll I tell him? I can't explain about Eddie on the phone. Besides, there's no proof of his story until his mother comes back. I wish you'd talk to us for a while. You're making me very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Danny. I know what I'll do. I'll make believe I'm Mrs. Davis and tell him I'm sick. Hello? Hello, Mr. Conklin. This is Mrs. Davis. Margaret? Yes, I just wanted to tell you that Miss Brooks doesn't feel very well. What's the matter? Is she taking a turn for the worse? Who? Miss Brooks. <laughs> yes? Oh, well, that is, she's no worse than she's ever been. <laughs> Have you had a doctor? Yes, but how did you know she was sick? You just told me a few minutes ago. I did? Oh, of course I did. Well, I'm, I'm terribly upset about this. 
Oh, now, for heaven's sake, Margaret, don't go to pieces. <laughs> oh, quiet, Margaret. I mean, Tommy. I mean, oh, I- I'll be all right. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Conklin. I wish my mother was here. I want my mother. Starring Eve Arden will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith with an important announcement. Palm Olive Soap is giving away prizes worth $67,000, a grand prize of $25,000 in one lump sum or $100 a month for life. And that's not all. There are over 2,000 prizes in Palm Olive's big treasure chest contest. Ford sedans, Westinghouse laundromats, from Silver Fox scarves, Host Master toasters. And it's easy to enter. Complete the last line of this jingle. A fresher, brighter looking skin is something I would like to win. I'll get Palm Olive soap today. Da 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 da. Write your last line on a plain sheet of paper or use an official entry blank giving complete rules obtainable at your dealers. Include your own and dealer's name and address and mail with the big word Palm Olive from the front of the wrapper of one regular and one bath size cake of Palm Olive soap to Palm Olive, Box 92, New York 8, New York. Now here's the jingle once more. A fresher, brighter looking skin is something I would like to win. I'll get Palm Olive soap today. Da 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 da. Mail your entry to Palm Olive, Box 92, New York 8, New York. But hurry, your last chance. Contest closes next Saturday. Get Palm Olive soap for a lovelier complexion. Remember, doctors prove Palm Olive's beauty results. <laughs> Now back to Our Miss Brooks, where we find Walter Denton and Harriet Conklin listening to the radio in Walter's car. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes our newscast Walter, from our nation's radio capital. A little, will you? I think they're going to give another clue for the $18,000 contest on Sing It Again. Okay, Harriet. And here, ladies and gentlemen, is your extra clue to the Phantom Voice on the CBS Sing It Again program. At camp, his father was a king who spent some time at lumbering. Okay, Walter, you can turn it off now. Boy, I'd sure like to win those prizes. At camp, his father was a king. Uh, What was the second line, Harriet? The second line? Da-da, 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 da-da. Oh. (laughs) It was nice of you to give me a ride this morning, Walter. Oh, that's all right, Harriet. If I were the principal's daughter and you were me, you'd give me a ride if my father drove off to school early in the morning without me this morning, wouldn't you? (laughs) You mean the only reason you stopped for me is because of my father? Oh, of course, that's not what I mean. I I thought you might want to ride over and pick up Miss Brooks with me. Mrs. Davis was pretty mysterious about her. Said she hadn't been home all night. Where did Mrs. Davis say Miss Brooks was, Walter? 225 Park Street. Park Street. Doesn't Mr. Boynton live on Park Street? Yeah, come to think of it, he does. (laughs) Walter, remember that picture we saw last week? The one called Her Other Life? Yeah, Harriet. Maybe Miss Brooks has another life. Who knows? She might even be secretly married. Miss Brooks? Married? To who? (laughs) Why, to Mr. Boynton, of course. I don't be silly, Harriet. Mr. Boynton doesn't like girls. He likes frogs. (laughs) Why, it's a wonder I didn't think of it before. Why, they might even have a family by now. That's just like a woman, always giving people families. (laughs) Well, this is Park Street, and there's Miss Brooks in front of that house. Hiya, Miss Brooks. Here we are. Hello, Walter. Harriet, I'm glad you could... Harriet, I didn't know you'd be along, but now that you are, I've got to take you into my confidence. Harriet, can you keep a secret? Oh, certainly, Miss Brooks. Even from your father? Especially from my father. Oh, good. (laughs) Then I don't want either of you to mention that you saw me here. You see, I told Mr. Conklin that I was sick, and, well, I'll explain it all later, but right now you've got to go to the grocery store for me. But what is it you're going to explain later, Miss Brooks? That's the secret, Walter. Just take this list and this money and have them send these groceries out as soon as possible. The address is right on the bottom of the list. Well, okay, Miss Brooks, but there sure is something funny going on. 
Why, there's nothing funny about it at all, Walter. Good day, Miss Brooks, and, and give my regards to the children. Thank you, Harriet, I will. What? <laughs> Now, do you believe me, Walter? Look at this order we've just given. Four bottles of milk, one dozen cans of strained vegetables, two chocolate milkshake bars, a large box of pablum, and some swieback. That sure is suspicious, all right. Nobody eats swieback if they're not married. <laughs> <laughs> Look who just came into the store, Walter. Oh, it's Mr. Boynton. Hiya, Mr. Boynton. Oh, it's Walter Denton and Harriet. How are you today? We're fine, Mr. Boynton. How are you all? Oh, well, as could be expected, we're anticipating a blessed event at any time now. <laughs> Another one? Oh, yes. Of course, Patricia has quite a big family now. She's even changing her name. <laughs> oh, yes. Patricia's one of my favorite frogs. Oh. <laughs> those, uh, those bundles look pretty heavy, Walter. Can I give you a hand with one of them? Oh, yeah. Thanks, Mr. Boynton. We just bought them for Miss Brooks. Miss Brooks? Well, why didn't she come down herself? Well, she looked pretty upset when we saw her last, Mr. Boynton. Here, you better take both of these bundles and get right over there. Me? But get right over where? I guess you never heard of 225 Park Street. Park Street? I live on Park Street. Harriet, he says he lives on Park Street. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come along, Walter. We'll be late for school. Don't worry, Mr. Boynton. Your secret is safe with us. Yeah. I think it's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and while Sleeping Beauty was waiting Prince Charming came to her door Come in, Prince uh, Oh, it's the doorbell <laughs> I guess you got carried away by the story It should happen to me <laughs> At last, the groceries uh, Hello, Miss Brooks And Mr. Boynton right behind them Come in, won't you? He's a big one, ain't he? <laughs> ain't he? There she goes again. Uh, Miss Brooks, who, who are these... these... Uh... Children will do, high pockets. <laughs> oh, they're, they're terribly bright. Now, boys, run to the kitchen and play with the meat cleaver until lunch is ready. <laughs> All right. But well, please make it snappy, because I'm hungry. And I'm thirsty. Oh, did you have to turn that on? Oh, excuse me, Mr. Boynton. There, there, little baby. There, but shh. Oh, I guess I'll have to pick him up. No. Uh, Miss Brooks, I don't want to pry, but where did all these children come from? Why, any biology teacher knows that. The stork. <laughs> What I mean is, whose are they? Well, they're the children of Eddie Garson, who's a student of mine's mother. <laughs> what? Which their father is a traveling salesman. <laughs> it's good, sir. I'm, I'm afraid you're upset. Oh, well, of course I am. You'd be upset, too, if you had breakfast crying and three children cooking on the stove. <laughs> Well, isn't there anything I can do to help? Yes, there certainly is, Mr. Boynton. You can help me get this house tidied up before Eddie brings his mother home from the hospital. Oh, but, Miss Brooks, I've got to go to school. You're smart enough now. <laughs> In some ways. <laughs> Call Mr. Conklin and tell him you're ill. But I'm, I'm not ill. Well, stick around a while. Your chances will improve. <laughs> well, I don't know what this is all about, Miss Brooks, but if you're in trouble, the... Well, the least I can do is stand by and lend a hand. Give that boy a box of merit badges and two tickets to the next Olympic game. Thank you. <laughs> no doubt you're wondering why I summoned you two to my office, Harriet. Well, yes, Mr. Conklin. Please. I was speaking to my daughter. Harriet? Yes, Daddy. There's something strange going on in this school today. First, Mrs. Davis calls to tell me that Miss Brooks is sick. Twice. Then Mr. Boynton calls, tells me he won't be able to come to school today because he's expecting an illness. <laughs> and then, while I was conducting both their classes, I catch my own daughter receiving a note from this... this... Scallywag? <laughs> from this scallywag. 
Thank you, Denton. <laughs> Hand over the note, Harriet. But, Daddy... The note? That's better. Hmm. Dear Harriet, whatever you do, don't let the cat out of the bag about meeting you-know-who in the grocery store and sending him where we did. We don't want to get Miss You-know-who in trouble. After all, we have no proof that those little you-know-whos are hers. <laughs> Nor are we positive that 225 Park Street is a love nest. <laughs> you know who? Love nest? What's the meaning of this, Harriet? Well, oh, you wouldn't want me to betray a confidence, would you, Father? Yeah, you wouldn't want her to do that, would you, Father? Uh, Mr. Connor? <laughs> Quiet. I'll find out what's going on at 225 Park Street. <laughs> Well, Mr. Boynton, did you enjoy your lunch? Oh, yes, indeed, Miss Brooks. And you know something? Seeing you taking care of those children and then tucking them in for their nap after lunch made me feel that this is where you belong. Miss Brooks, did you ever think of giving up your career as a teacher? Why, Mr. Boynton... I mean it. I've been thinking it over all morning, and, well, I, I've got another sort of career in mind for you. You have? Yes, Miss Brooks, I have. Why don't you become a governess? <laughs> I'll tell you what, Mr. Boynton. I'll become a governess when you become a governor. <laughs> oh, it's been fun trying to help you out this morning, Miss Brooks. I hope I have been of some assistance with the children. Oh, you've been a tremendous help, Mr. Boynton. They would never have gone to bed so quickly if you hadn't told them that fascinating story about the African tsetse fly. <laughs> oh, it, it was nothing, really. Nothing, he said. It had everything. Humor, pathos, sleeping sickness. <laughs> Now, if you'll excuse me, I'd, I'd like to wash the luncheon dishes. No, no, you sit right where you are, Miss Brooks. I'm going to do those luncheon dishes myself. Oh, but Mr. Boynton... No, I... no, I'll have them done in a jiffy. Picture you upon my knee. Just okay. Just two and two and three. <laughs> me for you and you for me alone. Tom, Tom, ti tam tam ti tam tam ti tam tam ti tam Oh, I hope that's Eddie and his mother. Be right there. We will raise a family, a boy for you, a girl for... Me! Oh! <laughs> Mr. Conklin! What's going on here, Miss Brooks? I was under the impression that you were sick. I was. I am. <laughs> uh, what a coincidence you're meeting me here at the doctor's. <laughs> Did you say the doctor's? <laughs> He's an obstetrician. <laughs> what? I don't think I helped my case any. <laughs> well, everything's all set, Miss Brooks. I just... Uh, Mr. Conklin! <laughs> Good afternoon, Mr. Boynton. I suppose you're here visiting the doctor, too. Oh, of course. He's expecting tadpoles. <laughs> it's, it's my sinuses, Mr. Conklin. Oh, well, you've certainly come to the right place for treatment. An obstetrician should do them a world of good. Now, see here, you two. I know this is no doctor's office. You know what I think? I think you two are secretly married, and this is your love nest. Love nest? Love nest? Love nest? Love nest? Who are these? What? Are... Where did they come now, now, from? Now, please, Mr. What? Conklin, remember your blood pressure. He turns an interesting color, doesn't he? Now, see here, you little... I, I don't know what you are or who you are or... Oh, please. You're like when I was silent pictures. <laughs> Get back in your room, you two. Sit down, Mr. Conklin, and take it easy. Mm. But, Miss Brooks, you promised us another story. Get back in your room, or I will kill you. <laughs> Come on, Mike. He's turned on us. Oh, now, please let me explain, Mr. Conklin. Very well, Miss Brooks. Everyone's entitled to a hearing before he's hanged. <laughs> That's what I like, an open mind. Now, you see, sir, Mr. Boynton and I were just taking care of these children until their mother comes back from the hospital. Uh, that's right, Mr. Conklin. It, it was an emergency. Yes. It's all well and good, but why did you lie to me? Well, it would have been hard to explain on the phone, Mr. Conklin. And besides, I didn't want Eddie Garson to get in trouble. He's been absent all week taking care of his little brothers. A very touching story, Miss Brooks. I don't doubt that your motives were of the highest, but I can't run a school that way. Miss Brooks... Unless you're in your classroom for the afternoon session, you had better look elsewhere for employment. Oh, that must be Eddie now. I'll get it. Eddie, I thought you'd never get... 
Where's your mother? Well, she's paying the cab, Miss Brooks. She'll be right in. The doctor says she's fine. Oh, good. Then she'll be able to take care of her family again, and I can get back to school. Oh, oh no, you can't, Miss Brooks. We need you more than ever now. Look, in this blanket here, a brand new baby brother. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a governess named Connie Brooks. <laughs> Eve Arden as our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment. But first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a Luster Cream shampoo. Only Luster Cream brings you K. Dumas' magic formula blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Gives loveliness lather even in hardest water. Glamorizes your hair as you wash it. Luster Cream. Not a soap, not a liquid, but a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Gives new beauty to all hairdos or permanents. Four ounce jar, one dollar. Smaller sizes, either tubes or jars. Tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo and be a dream girl, dream girl, beautiful Luster Cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a Luster Cream Shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, I couldn't afford to lose my job at school, and yet I hated to leave Mrs. Garson in the lurch. So I did the only thing possible under the circumstances. I got somebody to help out in my place. Before I left for the afternoon sessions, I gave a few last-minute instructions. Uh, now, be sure the formula isn't too hot, and don't be stingy with the talcum powder. Any other questions? What should I do with the safety pins when they're not in use? <laughs> But with a baby this age, you won't have that problem. Goodbye, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> Next week, tune in to another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Palm Olive Soap, Your Beauty Hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous dream girl hair. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns. Written and directed by Al Lewis with music by Wilbur Hatch. Mr. Boynton was played by Jeff Chandler. Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, Tommy Cook, Sandra Gould, Bobby Ellis, and Jeff Silver. <laughs> Dentists know what cleans teeth best, and over 4,000 dentists say Colgate Tooth Powder with a two-minute routine gets teeth sparkling and super clean. So to remove dull film and get your teeth shining clean, just brush teeth two minutes, morning and night, with Colgate Tooth Powder. Brush inside, outside, and biting surfaces. Always brush away from the gums. See how quickly this gets teeth naturally bright. It removes dull film that improper brushing misses. And... Colgate Tooth Powder also sweetens your breath. Try it. Buy Colgate Tooth Powder today. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, the exciting, fun-packed adventures of an amateur Park Avenue detective and his beautiful wife. Tune in Tuesday evenings over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at this same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.